Telesur is getting ready to launch its signal in Africa. Our English language channel will be available in 25 countries across the continent. It's another step towards our aim of connecting the global south. As night falls over the American continent, Telesur's signal will already be rising across the African continent. Cultures, knowledge, debunking the myths of Mother Africa. From there, we will be telling new stories. We want to be a platform for the voices of the African peoples. We are about to experience the joining of two continents. Our histories have been intricately connected. We share a common cause, a people who share the same dreams for the future. This connection has become a reality today as we extend our TV signal, and the name of that TV signal is Telesur. The North of Africa, West Africa, Central Africa, Eastern and Southern Africa. We will be there bridging the gap. South Africa is a contested space. It's a space where we've got a free market economy. It's a place where we've had a beautiful reconciliation period, but it's also a place with full of contradictions. It is the birthplace of Nelson Mandela, and it is connected in a very, very deep way with the solidarity movements of Latin America. All the resources of Telesur at its central headquarters in Caracas and in Quito are ready. So today, Telesur begins its broadcast in Africa, 25 countries in the continent, and we're connecting the Global South. I think it's an amazing opportunity, uh, the idea that there's two peoples around the world, one in Latin America and one in Africa, that are so far away, but that still have so many things in common, and the opportunity to have a channel that can actually connect those two, it's just an amazing opportunity. Our ally in Africa is the production company Moja Media. Where we enter a new era in the media environment in Africa. Because Moja Media wants to create a disruptive media environment where we can change the narrative of the current Western focus and multinational focus uh, on the news media and stranglehold of the narrative coming to Africa. Una parte de America, a part of America in the heart of Africa. Telesur, connecting the global south. And now to our stories. Thursday, August the 30th is the International Day for the Victims of Forced Disappearance. The day was established by the UN General Assembly in 2010. It had been championed by the Latin American Federation of Associations for Relatives of the Detained or Disappeared. To mark this day, civil rights groups, activists, families of victims, and people from around the world are demonstrating and making their voices heard. In commemoration of the day, the International Committee of the Red Cross has urged the new Colombian government to search for the over 83,000 people who disappeared in the country. The unit for the search for disappeared people was created as part of the peace accords between the Colombian government and the FARC, signed in 2016. Its director has said that political will is needed because families are yet to receive any response. Thousands of Hondurans are also marching to mark the day. They are demanding new presidential elections, a constituent assembly, and justice for social leaders and activists murdered during post-election protests in November. They also want the elimination of the military police and agrarian reform.
and Brazilians are marking the day by visiting the memorial in Sao Paulo in honor of those who disappeared during the military dictatorship. The memorial is set on what used to be the Department of Political and Social Order, where the victims of the military dictatorship were held. According to a special commission, 1,200 people were tortured, murdered or disappeared in Brazil during that time. Meanwhile, in Chile, those found guilty of crimes against humanity have been released by the courts, much to the dismay of activists around the continent. Our correspondent in Chile, Paola Dragnich, has a story. They let the murderers of the Augusto Pinochet dictatorship free, the ones who killed their families. And while today the whole world commemorates the International Day of the Disappeared, in Chile, family members cannot demonstrate because of the police of the special forces who are preventing them to march freely through the avenue and preventing them also to be able to leave photographs of their families in La Moneda Palace. This is what is happening today, August 30th, on the International Day of the Disappeared. At least 21 journalists have been reported missing in Mexico since 2003. The NGO Reporters Without Borders is saying this statistics is a record in the Americas. They say that the creation of the Specialized Prosecutor's Office for the investigation of the crimes of enforced disappearance promoted by the current administration of Enrique Peña Nieto has, quote, not been accompanied by any concrete strategic action plan in the case of journalists. There has been no detailed public information on the progress of the investigations, nor a comprehensive compensation plan for families, as recommended by the National Human Rights Commission in 2016. Each day, new fathers, mothers, and children disappear. Today, we gathered here for them. To Argentina now, where the currency has continued its free fall. This despite a dramatic move by the central bank to raise interest rates to 60%. The peso lost a further fifth of its value on Thursday. The latest collapse came after President Mauricio Macri asked the IMF to bring forward payments on its $50 billion bailout loan. But the markets have shown they no longer trust the government's ability to deal with the economic crisis. The market isn't believing the government today, and above all, it's not believing the economic team. I think that if the finance minister and central bank president Luis Caputo don't step aside today, this will get much worse because it's not a matter that it's happening because of economic measures that were taken, but rather that, at this moment, the actors have lost credibility. Thousands of Argentinian students and their teachers have marched through Buenos Aires to demand more funding for public education. The protest comes after President Macri's government announced big cuts in public spending, including education, as part of its agreement with the IMF. The demonstrators have rejected a government proposal to boost funding by 15 percent, arguing that inflation is double that increase. It's not just a salary demand because our salary demands are historic. But now schools, universities are going down and it seems the government is not aware of the discontent. Our correspondent in Buenos Aires, Sabrina Roth, has the details. Another critical day in Argentina as the dollar again shot up and reached 42 pesos. Remember that on Wednesday, President Mauricio Macri issued a recorded message with the intention of bringing confidence and tranquility to the markets, announcing that the International Monetary Fund would advance funds to comply with the financial programs of 2019. After that announcement, the dollar went up 34 pesos and 50 cents, 7.5 percent higher. Today, it reached 42 pesos. The Minister of Finances announced that next Monday new economic measures would be announced and that he would travel to the United States to meet the International Monetary Fund to reach an agreement. That is the same agreement which President Macri on Thursday said had already been agreed to. 
only for his own ministers to come out and clarify that it is actually an intended agreement on the part of the national government. Back to you in the studio. Sabrina Roth from Argentina. And coming up, more stories. We'll be back after this video. So yeah, national security is one of the most powerful notions in modern times. To swindle, I think, people to do things that are not in their best interest and to support massive military complexes that are not in anybody's interest but that are like cancers feeding on society. For Watch a series where the U.S. geopolitical strategies as an empire representing the culture of war and propaganda are shown and how this has served as a tool of social control. Psy War Saturday Only on Telesur Welcome back. The police in Ecuador have intervened against a demonstration to promote the rights of immigrants. The march under the slogan, the oppressed have no country, was called in opposition to a nationalist group protesting against Venezuelan migrants. The police moved in to separate the two groups, but then turned on the anti-fascist demonstrators, blocking their path and firing tear gas. The pro-immigrant march was significantly larger. Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez has arrived to Colombia as part of his Latin American tour. He was welcomed to the Casa Nariño Palace in Bogotá by Colombian President Iván Duque to kick off a two-day official visit. According to governmental sources, the main topics are economic and trade issues, but also Spain aiding possible peace negotiations with the National Liberation Army or ELN. Sánchez has already visited Chile, Bolivia, and he will go on to Costa Rica. And public sector unions in Costa Rica have called an indefinite general strike from September 10th in protest at the fiscal plan being discussed in Congress. The unions called on all people, including private sector workers, to join the strike. They want talks to find solution to Costa Rica's fiscal crisis. The trade unions have also presented proposals to increase income tax fight tax fraud, and block a reform which they say will affect the lower class the most. Everything's ready for the visit of Spain's president to Costa Rica's foreign ministry. The flags of both countries have been raised, and soon a red carpet will be placed to receive Pedro Sánchez. He will meet with President Carlos Alvarado to talk about bilateral cooperation topics such as environmental issues. They will also give a conference on climate change and how to deal with the changes that will occur all around the world in the coming years and decades. This will happen in the presidential palace on Friday morning in front of high-ranking officials related to environmental issues. The discussions on bilateral topics between both countries will happen behind closed doors. Now to all stories, the head of Nigeria's Senate, Bukola Saraki, has announced he will run in February's presidential elections. That makes him the highest profile contender to the incumbent Muhammadu Buhari, announced so far. Saraki quit Buhari's All Progressives Congress, or APC, 
and returned to his old party, the PDP. He is Nigeria's third most senior politician. His challenge ratchets up the pressure on Buhari and increases the electoral uncertainties in Africa's most populous nation. I hereby announce my intention to run for the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The of the on the platform of the People's Democratic Party. I do this with a firm conviction that I have in this case to secure a future growth for Nigeria and Nigeria. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has arrived in Ghana to address investment and migration in the region. This is the second stop of her Africa tour, which started with Senegal. She is expected to focus talks on migration because Ghana is a major source of people heading to Europe. Merkel is joined by several German CEOs to also focus on boosting business relationships. We have to be able to also to address the root causes of how come these insurgencies have been able to take root in our areas. And that is the whole business of economic growth, the training of our youth, the acquisition of skills, and the creation of opportunities that would allow people to have a more positive engagement with life, rather than the throwing bombs and maiming and destroying people. Ghana received the best evaluation from Reporters Without Borders in regards to press freedom. It has gone through three peaceful transfers of power. Corruption, much can be still improved, one of the reasons why Compact with Africa makes sure that tax processes are transparent through digitalization, also applies to foreign companies trying to evade tax. Overall, Ghana is one of the leaders of democratic development in Africa. Ghana and Germany share same values and principles. Chinese President Xi Jinping and the President of Sierra Leone, Ma Dabio, have met in Beijing and agreed to promote strategic cooperation. The African leader, the both for African with the Chinese leader, is in the meeting to attend the China-Africa Cooperation Summit and to sign various agreements. President Xi said that developing solidarity and cooperation with African countries has always been an important pillar of China's foreign policy. The Beijing summit gives opportunity for China to deepen ties with Africa. To be held on September 3rd and 4th, the upcoming summit is the latest meeting point of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, known as FOCAC. Under its framework, China has removed tariffs on most African exports and focused on cooperation projects involving agriculture, infrastructure and public health, among many others. At a press conference, the spokesperson of the Chinese Ministry of Defense commented on the strengthening of military ties between China and Africa. Looking ahead, China will continue to help Africa to enhance its security capacity, building independently, promote cooperation in multiple aspects, including personal training, logistics equipment, maritime escorts, peacekeeping operations, healthcare and humanitarian assistance, strive to usher in a new era for bilateral military ties, and make positive contributions to maintaining peace and security of Africa and the world at large. Medical equipment has been donated by China to hospitals in Uganda to help improve health care. China has recently donated medicine and supplies worth 70,000 U.S. dollars to the China-Uganda Friendship Hospital. Doctors say previously donated medical devices have helped reduce maternal death at the facility by 99 percent. The hospital was built in 2012 with Chinese funds in order to meet the surging medical demands of the country. Hundreds of migrants have been evacuated from detention centers in Libya after getting caught between clashes. The migrants, mainly from Eritrea, Ethiopia and Somalia, were relocated from the facility near Tripoli to a supposedly safer place by the UN and other aid workers. They were left behind by their guards after a fight between rival groups who reached the area. 
We'll take one last short break, but stay with us. We are always there tracking the news. We seek equality. We defend the truth. It's a hard job, 